Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, uh, while the, uh, in, in, in the last two uh, lectures we have discussed the idea of what in this knowledge is, what is tradi tra traditional ecological knowledge. Now, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in this lecture, I would like to present uh, on the ecological knowledge uh, which have is subsistence and livelihood practices, uh, which is experienced by the Kuki community in Northeast India. Now, these are partly something which is which is which was based on my uh, doctoral uh, thesis. So, I would like to share some bit of it so that you have an uh, glimpse an idea of how the uh, communities are pretty much connected uh, in in terms trying to make sense of uh, their environment or if not the kind of subsistence which in a way is uh, really uh, you know instrumental in their uh, sharing the kind of connections with their environment. Now, if you look at the ecological landscape mostly in northeast India, uh, there are a lot of myths and legends or maybe folk stories, the belief system, so and so forth, which are pretty much embedded in the you know uh, landscape. And in if you look at the kind of belief systems, myths, legends of the indigenous people, uh, that are recorded in their folklore songs and dances. Uh, there, there have, there seems to be existence, existence of an inseparable linkages between the ecology and the social system. Now, similarly, uh, like other tribes and communities, the Kuki tribes uh, in northeast region to have become uh, sort of a repository of traditional or indigenous knowledge based on their everyday uh, engagement with the landscape. Now, what are the kind of engagement they have? Uh, one thing is they, they also belongs to the, uh, I mean they do also practice this phrasing that is hunting and gathering and, and, and primarily uh, engage in this zooming or shifting cultivation. Now, this in this knowledge which is being you know acute or uh, practices for generations in a way is being conserved in the cookie imaginary, imaginary in forms uh, their epistemology and ontological engagement with the world. Now, how then this indigenous knowledge is being preserved or you know being uh, uh, practices when, when in terms of how they are being located in their ecological landscape. Now, if you looked at the Kuki way of life, they not only presents uh, a checker socio-cultural landscape, but their economic pattern is explicitly oriented uh, with deep based traditions, which means they, they also pos possess uh, practical experience based knowledge on the different objects constituting the surrounding ecology. Now, for example, uh, the practice of this zooming or shifting cultivation is based on their indigenous knowledge. Now, they possess this practical based uh, knowledge as we were talking about uh, the Levi Strauss argument of the bricolage or the bricolage that is making use of things, tools at hand, that is also something which the cookies have in a way 
you know, uh, been experiencing. Now I'm partly the, trying to historically contextualize the practices, uh, mostly which continues today, but mostly the belie belief system uh, were predominantly uh, the pre-Christian encounters. That is, uh, <coughs> beginning from the late uh, 19th century and early 20th century, most of the tribal communities in this region have, you know. Uh, converted to Christianity and as a result of this many of the uh, belief systems or in a way the idea of this cultural landscape has to some extent has been diluted or declined. But, but I am just trying to uh, talk all this uh, you know from the instances where uh, which were more or less primarily, uh, I mean, the, the primal religion period. The presentations for this uh, on this particular theme is premised within the theory of this, the, for example, the ecosystem people, which are an integral part of the natural or cultural landscape around them. Uh, this is pretty much seen from the works of Ramakrishnan. Uh, as I said, uh, extensive study on shifting cultivation among the, uh, I mean, people in Northeast. Now, the indigenous belief also uh, reflecting a spiritual connection with the land established by the Creator gives human beings a special responsibilities within the area they occupy as indigenous people, including them in a natural way to their territories. Now, the traditional ecological knowledge or indigenous knowledge is defined as a body of knowledge built up by a group of people through generations of living in close contact with nature and it also in, uh, in includes a system of classification that is a set of empirical observations about the local environment and a system of self-management that Kawan's resource used. Now, TEK is culturally and spiritually based way in which indigenous peoples relate to their ecosystem. This knowledge again is founded on the spiritual cultural instructions from time immemorial and on generations of uh, uh, careful observation within an ecosystem of continuous residence. Now, for indigenous peoples, as we had uh, discussed uh, about uh, Ingol's dwelling perspective, Ingol's rights, it is in their relationship with the land, their uh, business of dwelling, their, their history unfolds. Both the land and the living beings who inhabit in it are caught up in the same ongoing historical process. Now, indigenous people have their own effective science and resource use practices. Now, why is that there is a close uh, relationship between land and identity even uh, among the Kuki communities? Land signifies relationship which connects spiritual and also kinship bonds between people, nature and the sp sp supernatural world. Len is, I argue in this uh, paper, that a key force in the interplay of internal and external influences in the Kuki identity process. In this paper, also I demonstrate how the strength of uh, connection to the land influence and shape indigenous Kuki identity process through physical, spiritual, genealogical, and historical forces. Now, I argue that this indigenous knowledge system of the Kuki perceive nature as sacred because of uh, it displays a close relationship with their spirit world or maybe we can say the cosmology. It is these beliefs and practices that ensure a sustainable management of the landscape understand I mean the landscape under shifting cultivation practices and the uh, conservation of natural resource in the last few centuries. 
Now, uh, before going into deep details, we can perhaps try to see who the Kuki people are. They are indi indigenous tribes residing in Northeast India and uh, except the state of Arun Arunachal Pradesh, they are being scattered and mostly confined in the state of Manipur. Now, this Kuki traditional religion is condensed in the institutions of Indoi, uh, the house magic, which is usually hung among the uh, in the in a Kuki household uh, prior to their conversion to Christianity. The Indoi ceremonies showed how humans are in, in, intrinsically a part of nature and essentially linked to it. They became Christian in the early 20th century, so the practices of this house magic declined in importance. Now, the indigenous Kuki people had adapted themselves with the ecology and environment and thereby fashioned their lifestyle that is the belief and practices around Juming. Now, uh, the Kuki are in a way divided into different clans and sub clans and every Kuki clan follows a uh, patrilineal lineage system that is a genealogy which is normally traced through the eldest male members and the social institutions among the Kuki clans is based on kinship relations and the political organization each, each clan have their own separate village having one clan chief and many chief. Now the location of the study over here in this presentation is uh, primarily confined to Manipur which in a way is located in the northeast region of India which is bordering uh, some states of India and then the sharing an international boundary with Myanmar and the population as of 2001 census is 23 lakhs. Uh, however, the 2011 census which I did not give here is uh, 27 lakhs and of which the tribals normally constitute 40 percent of the populations and the ethnic categories if you look at is mostly the Maitish Nagas and the Kuki tribes who are subdivided into three recognized settled tribes. Now, if you look at the economy, agriculture in a way uh, is practices in both the plains and the valleys, but the uh, valleys practice mostly the permanent cultivation while the hills practice shifting cultivation and crops grown here are uh, mostly you know cereals so and so forth. Now, as I said this study is based on the multi-sided field work which is conducted in the hill areas of Manipur during the period 2008 to June 2009 uh, using uh, multiple data collection methods that is also participant observation and in-depth interviews uh, for my doctoral thesis. My ethnography study in a way follows a socio-historical approach drawing upon field work where information was collected through interviews, documentations of oral history, folk songs and tales and relate this to some relevant archival data and secondary literature. And this is the sort of a location of the study uh, which you can have uh, an idea where the study locate. Now, to begin with, what then is a uh, Kuki cosmology? Now, uh, if you look at the works of Emil Durkheim, that is in his elementary forms of uh, religious life, Durkheim argued powerfully that religion and ritual in a way provided both context and medium uh, for the affirmation of a society's fundamental principles of organization. That is uh, how religion and ritual is to be uh, you know uh, affirmed or related with the principles of a social organization. And in that because Durkheim in a way gave a lot of importance to society and society perhaps is uh, the foundation of a religion and uh, Durkheim view society as a system of forces which is conditioned by the 
symbolizing process and symbols which uh, are instruments of preserving and expressing these social sentiments. Now therefore, the individuals in a society or the society in a way is given so much uh, importance by Durkheim that it is a forces which conditioned uh, the individuals in some sense. Now, following Durkheim, I you know uh, discussed this cookie cosmology and its strong connections with the uh, environment and the indo symbolism that is the house magic which is hung in the every a cookie household symbolizes that clearly the symbolism that clearly establishes the intimate relationship of the cookies with the environment of their sub subsistence and their ancestors. Now, in a way, the economic perspective of subsistence is one thing, and the other is uh, the kind of close relationship with this they, they share with their ancestors that is the idea of maintaining their cultural identity. Now, Silitoy in a way maintains that uh, this local knowledge is conditioned by the socio-cultural tradition that is being culturally relative understanding which is inculcated into the individuals from birth structuring how they interface with their environment. Now, therefore, the social eco cultural co tradition is important of how this local knowledge is being molded and shaped uh, and how it is being produced. Now, in a sense, this cookie pri primal religion that is a pre Christian uh, period can be perceived as a form of local knowledge and a way of relating to their land. Now, the cookies through their agriculture practices or maybe through their rituals and ceremonies express a close connection with their uh, landscape which are based on their rights in relation to and responsibilities to their land and their spiritual connections with it. Now, the cookie traditional belief and practices uh, if you look at the their traditional religion, which are more or less based on a set of social, ecological, and normative principles, uh, are built on the people's experience and expectations, which are culled through generations of interactions with their social and natural environment. Now, the indigenous Kuki people is also uh, greatly influenced in its symbol making activity by the environment, especially that is the various floras that come within the ambit of their settlement. That is, they, they have that, uh, you know, making use of the floras which are in their uh, surroundings. Now, this constant uh, interactions. Uh, between the social and natural environment for generations in a way has sort of developed a certain kind of uh, beliefs and practices uh, to the Kuki community in, in terms of the symbol making or uh, creation of this symbolism. Now, some of the symbols uh, which are you know uh, reflected uh, in, a, in the domain of this uh, flora uh, that is a say that is it serves as a doikom. A say is a, uh, an oak tree uh, and, and which, which serve as the post of uh, how uh, the mag house magics are being hanged. And, and, and in, in therefore, in, in the rituals performance like I that is a wooden post known as silkom or nunkom is being hanged. Now, therefore, this oak tree in a way uh, is not just only a mere object, but it has certain kind of uh, a cultural significance or, or it has a symbolic uh, power, because uh, it is being used in the ritual practices. 
then the next is a cowpea that is a plant which literally means the mother of all the ropes. This rope is used to tie all the components of the indoi. And the, in the indoi, that is in the house magic, you have this, uh, the skull of a pig, uh, a god, and then the horn of a god. And uh, you have uh, the feather, white fe feather of a chicken, and then uh, you have all those materials and objects which are being hung in the house magic. And the third is the eye sun that is a divination through the sacred power of the wild turmeric that is which, which have not yellow in color but which is black in color that wild turmeric which is believed to have a lot of uh, healing power to different kind of ailments. So, these are some of the you know uh, 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 floras which are symbolic to the cookie community. Now, over here uh, this is something which I have captured uh, the kind of documentation which are being made where the indoi that is the house magic is being hanged. And on the right hand side is it is a, a zoom field where a ginger plantations are being made. So, this is uh, you know uh, the priest which perform and pro Pro propitiate the uh, house magic for the prosperity and welfare of the household. So, normally these are being done uh, almost uh, once in a year or maybe once house is newly established. So, as to ask uh, or venerate the spirit to bless the new household in their pursuit of may it be agriculture in so and so forth. So, this sort of practices in a way has uh, you know uh, resulted in bringing not just good health, but prosperity to a cookie family. Now, uh, we will try to observe uh, ex uh, discuss some of the kind of connections the cookies has with their land and forest. Now, the principles of land man connectedness uh, is uh, central to the cookie cosmology as it is believed that the human life is interconnected with the environment they are into it. Land to the cookies is inextricably linked to the material and spiritual worlds. Material because uh, it is, it is uh, not just a village territory or maybe not just meant for uh, farming practices, but also they have a spiritual connections to it. Uh, for the cookies that is forest act as a culturally significant and also a multi-dimensionally appropriated space and it has a meaningful role in every aspect of their religious, social and economic life. The forest is also a space which is linked with the spirits that is uh, it can be evil and it can be good that is helpful and dangerous and also ancestors and therefore has a strong symbolic significance. Subsistence of the cookie community is again dependent on uh, zooming cultivation. Their life in a way is guided by the agriculture cycle of zooming. For instance, the festivals and ceremonies evolving around it. Now, the practice of this zooming is deeply integrated into their social, cultural and economic life stance. Now, we will try to discuss some of the rituals which uh, revolve around these zooming practices. In cookie understanding of the uh, world of spirits, man and natural phenomena are all interrelated and bound to this ideal. Now, the cookie indigenous life uh, lies at the core of their rituals and their understanding of themselves and their environment. Rituals in a way have you know uh, remained an integral part of cookie jhum cultivation and these activities are integrated with their belief and socio-cultural life. Now, what is what is the what are the roles of rituals in uh, jhuming practices? 
These practices, in a way, allow local forms of environmental knowledge to be kept alive, which can be sought to play you know, an important role in keeping the links of the ecological knowledge with the religious or maybe spiritual practices uh, within the ambit of uh, ecological sustainability and environmental conservation. Now, the ritual in a way reflect the indigenous people's worldview of a sense of reciprocity and respect towards the other creation in the cosmos. Now, because this biocent biocentric uh, view of nature is uh, something which is pretty much prevalent among the Kuki's cosmology too, because uh, they have uh, this idea of sense of reciprocity and respect towards other creations. So, that sort of biocentrism is pretty much prevalent among the Kukis too. It also indicates that uh, uh, they have a special understanding of uh, the cosmos and the place of humans in the process of the cosmic whole, because it is important to you know identify and uh, situate how a Kuki individual tries to you know position themselves uh, in the, in this process of the whole cosmic, because uh, one thing which is pretty much evident is the kind of respect and uh, sense of recipro reciprocity that is caring and nurturing on the part or maybe the idea of regeneration of ecosystem is pretty much uh, prevalent in the idea on the psyche of a Kuki individual. Now, some of the rituals which are practiced like, like for example, the low moon sand, uh, which means uh, you know taking an omen before choosing a site for uh, an agriculture uh, you know a zooming site is offered right after choosing the site and before clearing the agriculture plots for zooming. Now, a ceremony again is conducted during the this ritual to offer a gift as a sacred action such as the sacrifice fold. Now, in this a white fold is being sacrificed so as to appease the spirit of that uh, uh, area or site. Now, the second ritual is daipu that is rituals after clearing the forest. The daipu is another agriculture ritual performed in every household that is this ritual is carried out for good health and prosperity of the whole village in their jhum cultivation. Now, uh, there is also a prevalence of a petty deity that is uh, a ritual of Chang Nung Po. Uh, in Kuki mythology, they were considered as a harbinger of good fortune and harvest that is appeasing the souls of the petty that is so, therefore, uh, this sort of uh, rituals are being prevalent. Now, on the left hand side, uh, you can see the uh, picture of a priest which is propitiating the low moon sun, that is the ritual uh, before and after choosing the site for this zooming. Uh, you know, uh, appeasing the spirits and, and uh, seeking a prayer for uh, abundance, harvestings, and health for the family. And on, on, the, on the right hand side is uh, social celebrations, uh, which are usually performed uh, after the harvesting festivals. So, uh, these are some of the kind of uh, rituals. There are a lot of rituals, but uh, I just want to limit and confine to a few. And uh, the idea is to, you know, look at the rituals and ceremonies at the same time, the kind of socio-cultural practices which are pretty much embedded uh, in the Kuki way of life. That is, the the worldview and cosmology in on the one hand, and on the other hand, the socio-cultural practices, and also alongside uh, e keeping up the knowledge system at the same time uh, maintaining the cultural identity is something which is some club together in terms of the 
idea of uh, uh, the ecological landscape in which uh, the subsistence practices uh, alongside the knowledge system is being you know maintained and uh, which which follows an integral part and processes. Now, in conclusion, we can in a way say that the indigenous cookies have for centuries maintained a very uh, unique relationship with their environment that is uh, the protection of their environment which is essential for their livelihood. And uh, we can in a way also uh, say that the cookies were biocentric in the past and much long uh, before the concept of knowledge and this uh, understanding in the scientific and uh, academic realm emerges. Now, uh, as we had discussed, the indigenous knowledge of uh, cookies continues to have relevance for conserving the Himalayan, the eastern Himalayan landscape and from the cookies experience, there are also strong reasons to argue that the ecosystem and biodiversity are best protected by the local people themselves. Now, therefore, uh, there is an increasing realization that if uh, the forests are to be protected, uh, community participation is something which are being, uh, you know, uh, strongly encouraged upon. So, therefore, uh, the uh, participations of the community or the locals are something which are strongly being advocated and perhaps if uh, the need be. Therefore, the, practi uh, the uh, participations of the locals uh, not necessarily by reviving uh, their old beliefs and practices, but at least in principles uh, these ideas or uh, you know uh, belief or their kind of connections with the environment can in some way be you know enriched and inculcated. And, and if, if that is the case, perhaps uh, uh, their knowledge system can in a way be you know recognized and given a place. And therefore, there is a greater possibility that uh, the ecosystem and biodiversity in a way can be best protected by the uh, accommodations and inclusions of those uh, communities like the Kukis and for that matter, uh, any other indigenous peoples, uh, especially in the uh, Northeast region. Now, for the Kukis too, knowledge is regarded as inseparable from the land and forest. So, apart from their dependence economically to the land and forest, they also have that kind of uh, affinity, uh, not just in terms of expressing their cultural identity. But uh, as, as they have uh, shared uh, knowledge and then understanding, their, their connections, the deep rooted connections between them and uh, land and forest is something uh, which can be sort of understood. Now, uh, with that, I end the sort of uh, discussion on. Uh, the cookie way of life, their ecological knowledge, the subsistence practices and livelihood practice and, and to what extent uh, how the you know rituals, cosmology, belief systems were inherent and, and, and to bring in the idea of what uh, Lynn White has argued uh, powerfully by saying that uh, the Judeo-Christian belief in a way has sort of uh, you know uh, to be blamed for the ecological crisis. So, in a way uh, if you bring that in the context of the Kuki people, it is also interesting to see that the kind of relationship which they share with nature, the, the rituals like the Indoi, the low moons and the Daipu so and so forth, which I have just uh, on the uh, significant, signif significant few which I have shown, 
are today normally not being practices and then son of which is considered as evil these are something uh, which are being you know uh, branded by the early christian missionaries from guided by the western scientific ideas because every practices of the you know indigenous people are seen to be uncivilized irrational and evil so therefore this idea of uh, or the dualism which they share with nature or the biocentric view which they share with nature which is pretty much uh, you know uh, can be instrumental in terms of protecting the forest today have uh, surfaced in a negative way because since most of the kuki people have today converted to christian religion they have maintained you know a uh, sort of uh, the anthropocentric ideas towards nature and that sense of individualism or uh, nature is seen to be you know uh, as uh, from a commercial or utilitarian perspective and that idea of community 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 and ideas and feelings which were pretty much prevalent in the past are no longer present but uh, as uh, pope john paul has uh, talk about in terms of the changing dispensations of or the crucifixion the crucifixion of jesus christ has in a way tries to bridge the gap between the two of how the humans are uh, having sharing an antagonistic or uh, uh, enmity with nature uh, as a result of the uh, beginning from the garden of eden has in a way has to be resurrected and that misunderstanding uh, between god and human in a way is being healed and if any individual in a way tries to you know resurrect oneself that sort of relationship between nature has to be looked at though i'm sure i'm not confusing you but i'm just trying to bring in, in the context of the indigenous kuki people and how christianity the, for the past century beginning from early 19th century and no no later part of 19th century and early 20th century in a way is being defragmented and then the kind of uh, relationship which they share with nature has changed totally and there is an increasing uh, realization that that sort of knowledge which they have uh, a century ago has a relevance today and how is that going to be uh, you know positioned and how do they try to contextualize so perhaps maybe uh, the self realization or any ecological deep ecological awareness what uh, lin white has talked about needs to be you know uh, brought in here so that uh, an idea of how through the use of indigenous knowledge the natural resource uh, is managed in a more sustainable manner